Let's pray. Um, Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, to thee be all praise, glory, and honor, Lord. For you only are worthy to be praised and to be held in um, exaltation and to have the preeminence and because you only are worthy. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, when I bought my truck in 2014, I, I remember that salesperson says, uh, they were talking the whole time, and I just says, uh, and then the only thing I heard was, you want to take it out for a trash drive? I heard that. I says, yes. And so once we got in the truck, she started talking about Bluetooth, blah, 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 OnStar, blah, 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 blah. I wasn't listening to anything. And this is why the manufacturer gives you this thing. And the beauty of these things, these booklets, is that they have pictures, you know? They have diagrams. They have graphs, they have charts, and uh, those I like to see because if whenever I have trouble, I'm not going to read that book. I never do, but in ever, if ever I have, especially when the fuse box, when the fuses go bad, then you go looking and they'll give you the whole, there's got, they have so many fuses, but you know, I sh I'm showing you this because God does the same thing. You know, these things that you see, the New Testament gives you all these doctrines. It's full of all these doctrines. And sometimes the books like of Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, Hebrews, those are, they're packed with information. So what God does in the Old Testament, he gives us, as it were, graphs, charts, pictures. And that's what these are. Pharaoh, Egypt, Moses, Aaron, Brick, Israel, officers. These are, you get stories, but these are really um, the graphs and the pictures and the yeah. drawings. You know, to understand those doctrines that you're going to find. This is what I'm doing when, you, when I tell you, because um, we're, we're looking at the two, when we're reading Exodus, we're reading, and, and the thing is, you've got to be right on your tippy toes because that changes. Right in, uh, and from sentence to sentence, Moses will be talking, and then the next sentence is the law that's talking, and sometimes it's both are talking. So I'm just giving you this a heads up because when we look at the Bible, this is what's going on, just to make sense, okay? And also, now look at this when God wants Israel out of Egypt. He also, he's saying, I want the church out of the world. Amen. You know? Now, I put an asterisk on there because the asterisk is, in this case, Israel. I'm not replacing Israel with the church because Israel goes on and the church goes on. In fact, when we leave this world, Israel will stay here Amen. Uh, to deal with Jacob's trouble. Okay. This is what we left off last week. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, you shall no more give the people straw to make brick. As, as heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. Okay, now we covered this, but let's go through it again. Now look at this. It says the same day. Why is that the same day? That's the day that Moses appeared before Pharaoh. Okay, the same day. Why is that important? Because that's the day that Pharaoh gets the sword. When the law shows up, remember what we said before? That when, when, Moses, when God told Moses, cast it on the ground, and when he cast it on the ground, it became a serpent. So then he says, pick it up. And when Moses picked it up, it was, it was really a, serp, a serpent being used. So God can give that sword to worldly leaders. And worldly leaders are carrying out his will. They're carrying out his will. So here you have the sword of God.
given to Pharaoh, and in Pharaoh's hand, it turns into a snake. It turns evil. Okay? Now look at this. This is amazing, folks. The taskmasters of the people and their officers. I thought that was strange. You know, I says that uh, 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 um, their officers, that's the people's. All those officers, I looked at the, what they are, and they're scribes. Now, a scribe is a kind of record-keeping person, secretaries, type of treasurers, things like that. They keep records. And it's, it's, and it's, it's interesting that it, it shows up here, the taskmasters. And the taskmasters here is to drive a debtor or to tax. The same day that Moses appeared, these things start appearing. Okay? You shall no more give the people straw to make brick. Now brick, again, I look at the word brick, and it says to become white. And we, already let, we have already looked at that word white. Laban was, means white, and that's sin. So to make brick, to make sin. To, here's a people in Egypt, you're sinning. This is a world of sin. But the straw, okay, so we looked at this. We looked at the clay inside this contraption. Uh, they would put straw in it. They would put straw in there to make the brick strong. That's what gives strength to the brick, the straw. And we see that the Bible says this, and the strength of, the sin, of sin is the law. So the same day that the law comes in, that's the day that Pharaoh says, no more straw. So up until this point, the straw was not an issue. And Paul says this himself, he says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. I had not known sin except by the law, for I had not known lust except the law says, thou shalt not covet. So the law, is, there's nothing wrong with the law like we mentioned before. And it's, it's, it, it comes into Egypt for a purpose, but it switches. Now Pharaoh's using that. And God is gonna, God's going to allow him for a purpose. He's using it for a purpose. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Whereas it wasn't a, an issue before, it is an issue now because they don't have it. See, and I, I recall when before I became a Christian, I used to live for the weekend. That's what I did. I lived for the weekend. You know, the weekend is coming. You know, let's go have some fun. You know, and then Monday morning comes up. I say, oh, it's back to work. But then once I became a Christian, there's certain things I couldn't do on the weekend anymore. You know, I mean, and if I did, the officers were now taking inventory. Uh huh. This is when the problems begin. Sin. Sin, we come out very aware of sin when the law comes in. And look at this. And the tally of the bricks which, you, which they did make heretofore, you shall lay upon them, you shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon them, Upon the men that they may labor therein and let them not regard vain words. Uh, and it's amazing, Brother Best, about three weeks, weeks ago, he preached on this. He preached on, on this how the world it wants to keep you busy on the weekend. They want to keep you. In fact, I knew a guy when I, when I was working at the Express News. I think he went like eight weeks nonstop working every day because he, he wanted to make money for a down payment for a house. Uh, so he was working overtime. The problem is he died in the newsroom. You know, um, for they be idle. And so this is what the world will do. We'll keep you busy because he won't let us sacrifice one day to our God. Let more work be laid upon them, overtime and such. Let them not regard vain words. Now, that's why the Lord gave us this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because God wants us to keep him in mind. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work. So this is what God, what God wants from us. 
This is later on. This is going to be given to us at, in Exodus 20. But look at this. The tally of the bricks. This wasn't an issue before. I mean, now it's become to the forefront. You're going to have to keep track of this. Now, once you become aware, that once the law comes into your life, this, the conscience is now working. The conscience, that's the conscience. Those are the scribes keeping track of that measure. Okay? And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get ye straw where you can find it. Yet aught of your work shall not, yet not, uh, yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So here it is, the same, you're going to have to keep track of the same, you're going to have to do the same kind of work, the same sin, but now you're going to be aware of it because it's being keep, kept track of because of the straw. And look at this, it's where well, you can find it. That's, that word says to appear or exist. And Romans 3.20 says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. It starts to appear. Sin starts to appear. And that's what Paul says. I wasn't aware of covetousness until the law <coughs> says, Thou shalt not lust. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill, ye, fulfill your works your daily task as when there was straw. So the taskmasters are saying this, hasted them. Them is the officers, because the officers are the ones that are telling the people. The officers, I believe, are the Hebrew. Um, they were been put, put, been put in, in charge of the Hebrew people doing this. And to press means that that's I believe that's why I, I've heard this before that a lot of the people that are in psychiatric wards and so on, a large percentage of them wouldn't be there if they follow what the Lord says, confess sin and so on, because this is this is depression. This is to depress, uh, hasted them to keep up with this, fulfill your work. Do your daily tasks as when you, there was straw, but now there's none. And the officers, notice how this word keeps popping up. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and, and today as heretofore? So notice that the, look who's getting beaten here. It's the officers were beaten and demanded of. And I believe that's the conscience. I believe that's the conscience that's being uh, dealt with. A good, under good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. And that's part of the hardness. That the conscience, people can go out there and I believe... This, before I was a Christian, I could sin without any regards. But once you're a Christian, you're kind of ruined because you can't sin anymore without consequences. Amen. You know, the conscience lays heavy on you. Uh, if you go out and do things you shouldn't be doing, you're not like the world anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the law, it's just, it does its thing. And um, then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou with thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, Make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. Folks, I forgot my watch. So one of you will let me know uh, um, about 12 minutes before. If you can just raise your hand out, no. Notice again the officers. They come, these are the, they, they came to and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? And notice thy servants three times there. 
Romans 6, 20, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from the righteousness. Amen. What fruit had you then in those things were enough? You are not ashamed, for the end of those things is death. They're beaten. And this is the conscience being dealt with. But he said, you are idle. You are idle. Therefore, you say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go, therefore, now and work. For there shall no straw be given you, yet shall you deliver the tally of the bricks. So they're, they're being told, no, you're idle. This is why you're, 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 uh, going, you want time to go, go sacrifice unto the Lord. Go, therefore, now and work. And again, the tally is there. So this is being measured out. And the officers of the children, again, the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in an evil case. After it was said, you shall not minish out of, from your bricks of your daily tasks. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way and they came forth as they came forth from Pharaoh. Notice what's happening here. And this is the Lord's work. And when you see this, I said, this is amazing. God is still behind it all. It looks like he's not nowhere to be seen. But look, uh, the officers of the children of Israel did see. And I, I, I connected that to Luke 15, 17. And when he came to himself, this is that prodigal son. You know, he was over there feeding the pigs. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and spare, and I perish with hunger? He came to himself. And here are the officers, and I think the Lord pushes the conscience. This is why the conscience is there to work, unless you mess it up. Because the Lord says you can have an infirm conscience, or you can have a seared conscience. Now that's really bad. If you have a seared conscience... That means you're beyond feeling. Uh, but when your conscience is still working, you can see that they were in an evil case. And look what they say. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way. They stood in the way. It was like they were waiting. God is saying, hello, you're finally, are we finally done? You know? Because they're coming to Moses and Aaron. And Moses and Aaron stood in the way. Just like when the prodigal son came home, the father was waiting with him, for him with open arms. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because you have made our Savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. There it is, folks. See? The officer are coming to Moses and Aaron, and they say, You did it. You know, you're to blame. They, the officers, are saying now to Moses and Aaron, it's your fault. You have made our Savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh. And look what you have done. The, remember the sword of, of Moses? Yeah, he gave it to Pharaoh. And so they're, they're saying, you gave the sword, you put it in his hand. And of course, that's what he did. And that's why it's evil. And look what the Bible says in Romans 2.15. We show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. And there they are. They're accusing Moses and Aaron. That's the conscience working. But God is doing a work because look what Moses says. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, Wherefore hast thou so evil and treated these people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has done evil to these people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. That's Moses speaking. Okay, remember what I said? That's Moses speaking, but now let's look at the law. Moses is law. And he's saying, Why hast thou done so evil unto these people? The evil, and this is the way we look at the sword or judgment. We, we, and look what he says, the Lord, you're doing it. Because, of course, the Lord gave the sword to Pharaoh, just like he gave it to Nebuchadnezzar. So it's saying, you have done this, Lord. But then look what it says, why is it that thou hast sent me? 
And then again, look, for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has done evil. Well, who has done the evil? Either the Lord or Pharaoh? Both. No. Both, because it's the sword of the Lord which had been given. Now, God's going to deal with Pharaoh for doing so. It's amazing. Pharaoh's not off the hook because Pharaoh's doing this thing, but God is using him to do his work. And this is why, when you read these uh, stories in the Bible, it kind of, the fear of the Lord is a healthy thing, you know? The fear of the Lord is a good thing. It comes into our lives and it says, I can use anything, you know? A two by four laying in the highway. I remember I was left, left, left port one day and, uh, and I saw a two by four on the freeway and I says, oh, good grief, it was in my lane. I says, I'm going to, I think I can miss it. So I, I got my, my car situated so I would miss a two by four that was laying on the highway. And I, my front wheel barely nicked it, barely nicked it, and then made the two by four spun around so fast that it sliced my back tire. <laughs> Brand new tire, it just sliced it. And I, oh, good grief. And I went to the side and I says, and I got off the car, I says, Lord, you meant that for something. There's something in this. I know, so I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm, I'll change it, you know. But you never know how the Lord's working. He uses everything, everything. Now look what it says here. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. This is the answer to most to Moses. Moses said, "Why have you done? Why are you doing so much evil, Lord?" Wherefore the law the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So this is why the Lord's doing it. He's got a purpose in this. He says, the law is bringing us, to, just like the, that prodigal son and the, feeding the swine came to himself after all that smell. He says, I'm ready to go home to dad. And so the dad was waiting with open arms. And I think the, that's what this means here. So you have both. The rod of the Lord and the serpent working at the same time. It's a good picture here where we see that. But look what it says. Since I came to speak in thy name. Because now, this is why, I'm, this is why I left the thesis off. Because it changes. Here it changes. Something, it changes to something else. The name of God. God is about to show his name. Who he is. Because look what he says. We're now in chapter 6. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. He says, Then the, then the Lord says, Because Moses has just asked, I says, Lord, I came in your name. And so the Lord is talking. Now here's another thing. Notice there's Moses and Aaron, but God is here talking to only one, Moses. And this is very important. Um, and I'll show you why if, if, we get to, if we get there. It says, uh, now you, you're about to see what God's going to do. Because God has not been known like this before. Up to this point, God has not been known. God has been known for his attributes uh, he's, had, he's had titles, but his personal name was not known up to this point. And he's about to say, look at this. What I will do to Pharaoh, you're going to see. And of course, we're gonna about to get into all those wonders. With a strong hand and to drive a debtor to tax. And I think this is why the taskmasters are being used. Strong hand. And, and we were told they were serving with rigor. So God is bringing it, making it hard on his people. Because they're in sin. If you're living in Egypt, you're in sin. And so it's a hard life. Look at this. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You know, and I know the world is against this, but you're the loser if you go against this, because this is the Lord's genius. And now look at this. And God spake to Moses. Again, no Aaron, and said unto him, I am the Lord, 
And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. This is a title. This is by the powerful God, very powerful, the Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So here's, God is saying, Moses, I am the Lord. That's Yahweh. That's Jehovah. Up to this point, Moses knew him as such. But, he says, these other guys, they didn't know me like this. They knew him as El Shaddai, the powerful. But now, these people, the people of the land, Abram, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I, I, I think, you know, they must have been afraid of God. I mean, Abraham was pretty close to God, a friend of God. But to know that God required us, he required a sacrifice. But here, God has shown himself to be a personal God. You know, a personal God. And, and, and I, look at this, look at this. I had to include this. Look at this. In Exodus 34, 6, who the Lord is. Because Moses says, Lord, I want to get to know you. Is it time? What time? Isn't it amazing? Yes. What did Jehovah Witnesses do with that? Because it says, I wasn't known by Jehovah, and they have all these people all the way up to their calling of Jehovah. Yeah. All the way in Genesis. And he said, I, I didn't, they didn't know me by Jehovah. Yeah. They didn't know him. Not like this, because Moses says, I want to I wanna see you, Lord. I want to see you face to face. And the Lord says, you can't see me. I'll pass by you, and you'll see my hinder parts, whatever that means. <laughs> but God, you know, but look at this. Look at what he says there. At this point, he says this, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. That's Hillary. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. There's so much goodness in here. You know, our, our God is a merciful, good God. Do you know, to know God like that, and this is what the, the Muslim people don't know their God like this. They're, the Muslim people don't have a personal God like this. We call our God Father. You know, cause, but this is what, okay, now watch this. And I have established also, I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. So here God is saying, this is who I am, and I have a covenant with them. So he's telling Moses, you need to go talk to them and tell them this. I know their fathers, and they knew me, but they didn't know me like this. And so they need to do this, what they have been doing all along, is these are the people of the Lamb, the covering. So I have established my covenant with them. God has a program. You can see this here. God has a, he has a program that's got to be done. And he's saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take them out of Egypt and give them the land that was promised. You know, you got to keep in mind, they, were, they have been in Egypt for 430 years. So they probably forgot, you know, God. He's forgotten about the covenant he made with our fathers. No, he hasn't. God has a plan. It's just like we said before. There are pat or there are cycles of time, and you see that in the book of Judges, and you see it here. Four hundred thirty years, it's time. God is working. God has a plan. It's working. His plan is working. This is why it's always good to be with Him, working with His plan. He says, "This is the land that I'm going to give him, the land of Canaan." And now, notice this, folks. This has always struck me as peculiar. How, look at where Israel is located. It's a little bitty land, chunk of land. I mean, I mean, 
actually Bear County, if you kind of squished it, kind of long and stuff, it was pretty, pretty much the same kind of size, you know? But it's located here, in between these three grain, uh, three great land masses, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It's, it's a land bridge. Why is it there? Because there, the gospel is going to go out to the whole world. He wants the whole world saved. And this is the Lamb. These are the people of the Lamb. I have remembered my covenant like God doesn't forget. It's just saying, I have a plan. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get you out into this land. Because he wants the Lamb to provide the covering that the whole world needs. Everybody needs the Lamb. Amen. The covering. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with, a, and with great judgments. Notice what he's saying here. Wherefore, this is the reason. Say unto them, I have, this is my reason. And look what he says. I am the Lord. And then he says, I will, I will, I will. Redeem you with a stretched out arm. This is my will. The lamb, the covering that he's going to provide for the whole world, and this it's this, folks. With a stretched out arm, I'm going to redeem you. So it's right there. Now, the people might not have, they might have forgotten after 430 years, but God says, I have a plan, and this is my plan. And to us, it's speaking, God has a plan still, you know, to the church. He has a plan for Israel. But he's got a plan for us too. And this is, I think, I think of myself how many times I just go silent for times, for long periods of time when I don't share. And I, I feel like I'm in a funk when I don't Amen. share the gospel. Yeah. I need to share the gospel. Amen. Oh, I need to. And I get excited. Once that happens, I share the gospel with somebody Amen. and I get excited yeah. and I'm on fire again. I say, oh, this is good. This is good. The Lord is using me. Because if I don't, Witness to anybody, I feel like, what's wrong, Lord? I've been put in a shell. What's wrong? Is there sin? What is it? I don't want to feel like that. I need to be used. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to, to give it to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. This is the name. He just has explained. He says, this is my will. This is what I want to do. Look at how I will. This is the will of God. I am the Lord your God. And this is the land I'm going to give you. And then he closes it with I am the Lord. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearken not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. Isn't that amazing? That's Moses saying, Lord, they're not listening to me because they're so worked. They're so tired. And they're overworked. And that's what happens to a lot of people that don't show up for church. I mean, they're overworked and they're tired. And so they, they, they don't have time for church. So they're not listening to the law. They're not listening to the word of God. That's the law. Moses spake. Notice, it's not Moses and Aaron. This is a conversation that's going on between Moses and God. And we know that the law is spiritual. Therefore, it's not heard. And that's why we can't hear the law, because it's spiritual. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his hand, out of his land. And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? He's saying, I am, Lord. I. Remember, he had, he, he had mentioned this before. He had this problem. He says, I, I stutter, Lord. I, I don't speak well. Uh, I'm not eloquent. I'm of slow speech. And that's what the, this shows us, folks, we're going into 
we're going into a, an intro here that the Lord, of how the Lord has shown us how important the high priest is. The high priest is very important, and he's about to show us this. He said, the Lord is talking to Moses. You need to tell him this. Speak to Pharaoh, and Moses says, Lord, the, the children of Israel won't listen to me, much less this guy. He was, he's not going to listen to me. Of course, but he's, because it, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual thing with Moses, the law. How then will they hear me? And then, uh, Jeremiah 6.10, this is why the uncircumcised lips means that he's, it does, he, does, he has a stuttering or a problem with the speech. Because in another place we, we hear this. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. And in another place it talks about the heart being uncircumcised. Unable to understand. And the Lord spake to Moses and unto Aaron. Notice how now Aaron comes into the picture. Because that change is going to, it's about to undergo here. Um, does anybody have the time? Okay, let's just go ahead and finish. We'll finish this. We'll start. We'll finish this thought. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Notice, he's speaking to both now. And then he says, he gave him a charge. This is a command. He says, do it. Bring my, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. God's plan must go on. It's got to be carried out. But the law cannot do it. It's going to need the high priest. And that's Aaron means bright or high, which is the high priest. And you'll see, we'll, we'll start here next week because look what it says bring the children out and now look at this chart you have Reuben you have Reuben Simeon Levi Judah and then this is the order and then Na, then Nan Dan Naphtali Gad Asher Issachar Zebulun Joseph and Benjamin this is their birth order and then of course Dinah was born after Zebulun but what you're about to see which go ahead and read on your own if, if you can and see why it's, the, it's thus the order that we're going about to go into next because God says bring them out and you would expect this order but this is not the order in which it happens okay so we're going to close there and let us pray Lord God thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us Lord thank you for the pictures the diagrams and the schematics that you have in the Old Testament, O oh Lord, to lead us into truths that you would have us understand concerning your doctrines found in the, in the New Testament. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, for beside you there is no God that's good and kind and merciful. In your Son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.